So this story begins as I was laying drunk in a field in Switzerland one night. And as my head was lolling gently back and forth, I was looking up at the stars, I began to wonder about starlight. If each star is sending a ray of light through my pupil to hit my retina and create a point of light that I see as the star, then how come if I move my head ever so slightly to the side, it, the star doesn't move? Because the pupil is not just a pinpoint where light can go through. Uh, especially at night, it's actually dilated to be fairly wide, and there should be room for that ray to go through a different part of it, hit my retina in a different spot, and make the star look like it's moving, right? And so I realized I had a fundamental misunderstanding about how vision worked. What I was missing is the fact that the light from each star is actually going through every single point in the pupil. Um, the only reason that it doesn't make the shape of your pupil on your retina, the only reason stars don't look like the shape of your pupil, is because you have a lens and the cornea. And the cornea and the lens together in the eye help to focus the light from each star down to a point on your retina. Now, you can change your focus, obviously. Everyone has experienced this. You're looking around. If you look at your finger up close to you, things far away are blurry, and vice versa. And so you can actually make stars look like your pupil by focusing on something really close to you. So if you lie drunk in a field and hold your finger up really close to your eye and focus on it, all of a sudden the stars will each become a little tiny circle, a little blurry circle, which is the shape of your pupil. Now these aren't really the ideal circumstances to experience this, but what you can do is go into a dark room and find some kind of electronics with like an indicator light, a tiny little LED or something, some kind of point light source and put it kind of far away from you, and then try to focus on something very close to your eye uh, so that it becomes blurry. And you'll actually see this sort of circle develop, which is the shape of your pupil. And if you don't believe me that it's the shape of your pupil, what you can do is close one of your eyes and take a little flashlight and put it up to your closed eyelid. Now what this will do is increase the overall light coming into your visual system, and your brain will respond to this by making your pupils smaller. And lo and behold, you should see the little blurry circle of this distant LED light all of a sudden shrink as your pupil gets smaller, and the image it projects on the back of your retina will also get smaller. Now, if you do the exact same thing except focusing on that indicator light, when you turn the flashlight on, you won't see a different image. In fact, your eye is resolving the same image, just with less light, because instead of focusing down the big blurry circle, it's now focusing the small blurry circle to a point on your retina. They're both mapping the same way, and you end up with the same image, it's just a dimmer image. And this is why your pupils contract. Having your pupils contract allows you to see the same image while getting less light from each object. So what's really going on here is that your pupil is effectively kind of holographic. Every single point on your pupil is passing through information from the entire scene that you're seeing. And this is why when your pupil contracts and you close off that outer ring of your pupil, it's now gone and blocking light, you don't lose any peripheral vision or anything, the image just gets dimmer. Well, as objects get further and further from your eye, the light coming from each point on them gets more and more parallel. And so this is why distant objects look smaller and more point-like. Now stars are so far away that all of the light from them is pretty much completely parallel. This can give you kind of a new way of understanding how something like the North Star can be useful, because all of the light coming from it is pretty much aligned with the north-south axis of the Earth. And so anywhere you look at this star from the surface of the Earth, your line of sight will be aiming to the north. So what this means then is that stars don't really have a visual shape. If you focus them down perfectly onto your retina, they just make a point. Even the best telescope, if you look at a star, it's just going to be a point of light focused down from this parallel curtain of light that the starlight actually makes as it hits the Earth. So now we have this new kind of bizarre image of starlight as a series of overlapping curtains of parallel rays of light that all hit the Earth from the same angle for each star. And what a star is made of is all the light in your environment that's coming from this one particular direction this one vector of light, any light in that direction is going to be focused down to the point that you see as a star. Now in practice, we know that stars don't actually look like stationary mathematical points of light. In fact, they kind of twinkle and shimmer. And the reason for this is that this parallel curtain of light doesn't reach your eye completely parallel and perfect. It has to pass first through the Earth's atmosphere. And the turbulence in the atmosphere will cause it to refract slightly differently effectively making the curtain billow and wave a little bit, and so when it reaches your retina, the image will be shimmery, and this is why stars seem to twinkle. 
This is basically the same effect as when things seem to kind of shimmer through heat in the summertime when it's really hot out. So the visual experience of looking at a star really has nothing to do with the shape of the stars themselves, but rather the interference from the atmosphere, and if you're out of focus, the shape of your pupil. <laughs> so later that night when I tried to explain to my friends that stars can be pupil-shaped, and that the pupil itself is effectively kind of holographic, they were understandably a little skeptical, and I wasn't very well able to explain myself, so I figured I would get around to making a video eventually to try to explain this in a more lucid way, and this is that video, so thank you for watching. <laughs>